G'day fellas, and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the north side of the map, playing in the color blue as the Rus. We've got Simtom. And in the south of the map, playing as the Evermobile Mongols in the color green. It's Salami. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mediterranean. It's been some time since we've been here, but it feels good to be back. I'm looking forward to this game. For anybody unfamiliar with Simtom, Simtom's been around for quite some time. I remember back in the day, the very first tournament we had in Age of Empires for Genesis, hosted by EGC TV, of course. Simtom, in round two, almost took out the Viper. Viper, he went on to win the tournament, but Simtom, he played a style of Mongols that had never been seen before. It was one that had an outpost rush. And this game changed the way that the Mongols was played for the rest of eternity. That's my TED. That's my TED talk. Thanks for coming. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to this game. Obviously, Sim Tom. He's been around for quite some time, uh, but uh, never really broken through to you know like the top ten. Uh, if I remember correctly, he's also from the UK. Uh, so English speaker. Uh, I don't know whether he streams or not. Uh, salami obviously streams. You guys would have seen and heard and smelt all of those salami streams. Uh, now we do have a double dock opening. I should, I should probably say a single dock opening for both of the players rather than a double dock opening for both of the players. Makes a little bit more sense. Um, interesting to note that the dock... The dock... I don't know if there's any devs watching this right now, but just log a new bug report. For whatever reason, the dock on the minimap doesn't have an outline. I don't know if you guys can see that, but like all of... Everything else has got an outline, but the dock doesn't. It's so hard to see. Look at this. I wonder if that's intentional. And we got, we got trouble in paradise right here as Simtom's actually found a villager from Salamis. Boar got, got pulled, as well as that wolf. He was having a little bit of trouble with it, so it did go down. So going to be minus one vil here for Salami on the Mongols. Salami just kind of playing a standard opening here, not, not really looking to attack the dock or put any pressure on at this stage of the game. And Simtom, interestingly, only going for the one scout. But I guess you kind of have to, don't you? When you're playing a map like this, you're looking for that really early attack, and that's what I'm going to expect out of Simtom. I'm not going to expect him to, to be doing anything other than, than the... I don't know what you'd call it. Maybe like the the Mr. Rus strategy on this map, which is kind of all in, right? Or at least it feels that way. And look at this. We've got a villager moving out. He's actually going to be looking to deny some of the deer here. Oh, he's going to deny the sheep. Oh, oh super smart coming out from Salami. So he's going to be trying to... The, the key factor here is he's, he's using this villager to deny the deer because Simtom can't actually shoot the deer because Salami will then shoot it. And we see a second scout now going to come out. This should be enough to actually one-shot the deer. He's going to go for it, or at least try and go for it. He gets it. But the, the, so many sheep have been taken down. This is going to be an insane mill. If Salami ever loses the water or wants to transition into some sort of land-based economy, this is going to be amazing for him just picked up what, what is it yeah four sheep right there so another thousand food on top of it keep in mind there's only 2350 food in these hunts so you've just taken it to 3350 that's amazing that feels so good over on the other side of the map though symptom about to age up he's sitting on 370 food at the moment expect any second and interestingly he's only got three fishing boats no or two fishing boats and one on the way i feel like that's probably not a lot i don't know maybe, maybe i'm maybe i'm crazy or something like that and we do see we got we got double deer hunting out here and seems i'm gonna get forced back you know i mentioned earlier it, it was it's not inter not, not rare but like it is quite normal to be going for a single scout on a map like this and i think salami does well in punishing it because he knows playing as the mongols exactly what he's going to be up against here as the rus um and it's going to be it's going to be the golden gate attack you know the very common golden gate attack that we see where the, the, we've got the two lodger fishing ships that move across the map uh and I, th I think he transforms them into uh, in into attack ships or into archer ships is probably the better way to say it. Uh, and then makes a demo at home. And then that way, every everything is secure on, on the front. Uh, it basically means that on the defense, even if you, if you were to make a light junk, you're going to be up against two versus one. And we can see them coming across now, uh, in, just in preparation. Almost a little bit of a mistake right now because Simtom, well, I, I mean, as long as he comes up and, he, and he's sitting on top of this deep water fish, he'll be fine. Um, but yeah, just looking to get the transform and you, you can even come in right on, on this deep sea fish here and j just be that close and that aggressive to your enemy just so that they know what's happening. 459 age up though, immediately starts transforming 
the Lodger attack ships, the Lodger fishing ships. Now, we can't actually see that they're transforming. You can just tell by the movement speed. 0.75 movement speed compared this to a fishing boat, which is 1.5. So already, Salami on the run right now. It's looking like he's, uh, he's getting excited Up towards the north. Simtom having a, a decent time cleaning up some more wolves. But Salami with that silver tree, of course, that silver tree. Gonna be in play here, of course. Silver tree, I, I mean, we've talked about it before. Obviously, it's it's kind of like the landmark of the season. If you if you were going to look back on season three in 10 years time and say, what happened in season three? You'd be like, trade. Trade happened on season three. And indeed, that would be the case. And we can see pretty interesting use of, of the fishing boat. Salami gonna be giving them up. Does manage to, to keep six alive, but obviously gonna have to throw away two of them. They're not gonna be able to fit. And it's quite some time. It's gonna be an entire minute before Salami is up. Uh, compared to Simtom, who gets up very, very quickly. Nice micro coming out from Salami. Just delaying this this Lodger Galley from returning back over onto this southern front. So now that the age-ups come through, Salami begins by training a Hulk. And Simtom has a notable absence of fire ships. We would expect a demo ship to be coming out towards this front position. Because the whole idea of this strategy is that you come in early. And you can see now he's training it. But I can't help but feel like this is too late. It's, it's going to buy him enough buffer where he might be able to get out an archer ship as well. And if he gets out a single archer ship, that's really going to be difficult. The whole the whole advantage of, of this strategy is that you can really look to, to, to push your enemy off water quite early. Demo ship coming across. Fishing boats are out. Oh, 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 oh this could be super smart by Salami. Does he do the right thing? He's going to have to take... He's going to have to cop this to the face. He's got no way to defend it. We can see the archer ship, the light junk, barely coming out. Now he just needs to mass repair, mass repair. That's exactly what he does. And at the same time, it looks like he cancels the war junk just so he can focus on repairs here. He's going to be losing a lot of fishing boats for it, but he manages to keep himself on water, focusing down the fishing boats. And we do see the doubt. Oh, I do apologize. No, the, the, the light junk did come out. Takes out everything. And he's still on water. Doesn't lose it. And there, there you can see how much damage the demo ship takes. Silver tree moving up towards that northern position. It does get scattered out by Simtom as well. And now, what does Simtom do? I mean, uh, do I just type? Do, do I just type GG at this point? Like my whole strategy has just been evaporated in the blink of an eye. Just a little bit of a lack of speed, I think, coming out on, on Simtom's part. But he's still got a pretty good advantage when it comes to water. The question is going to be whether he can maintain that advantage and whether Salami can find an advantage elsewhere. We do see the Khan moving up towards this northern position, or rather, eastern position. I guess it's kind of north if you were to consider the, the eastern line here like that, but... Look at this, we've already got walls coming in from Simtom. He knows how important it is to make sure this trade does not happen. You can see the scout down on the southern spot as well. Moving across the map, the demo ship's gonna hit. Takes out the attack ship, we've got a couple of demos out here. Salami just falls back for the moment. Up towards the north. Beautiful economy coming through for Simtom. Very full wood economy here. Single villager just on food. That's all he needs. How many fishing boats are we talking at the moment? Only four. But it's more than enough. It just keeps you going. And now we fall into a bit of a lull period. Because either you say good game or you don't say good game. And from there, you continue on. Like if, if this was the Red Bull Wallalol, these two players probably would have said good game by now. Because Simtom would be like, well, I, I blew my lead. But I like the fact that Simtom is continuing to go. And we do see Wheelbarrow, double Broadax coming through. It's a very smart move. Market going down. Question is going to be whether this wall actually gets up. If this wall gets up, it's going to be very difficult for Salami. It's going to be really key here for him to block this wall. We take a look from the perspective of Salami. See what he sees. Does he spot the wall? He, saw, he sees the wall segment just. He sees it just. A single wall segment. And he continues moving on. Does the scout move back? That's going to be the question. He's looking to try and block. 169 gold from that trader. Not too bad. But the demo ship comes in. Takes out the... The sprinkled ship. Second sprinkled ship. Teeing up though. It looks like Salami might be losing the water here. Demo ship just trying to bait out. I, I think it was a, trying to bait out a, a, a little bit of a, an attack right there. You can see the way that he had, like, stop micro prepared. Still more demo ships. The closer you get to the, to the defense, and you can see right now, Salami might be in a bit of trouble. This wall almost going through, and he's come back the other way. 
He's got two bills out here. And remember, it does take a long time to get these walls up. So Salami will have plenty of time to react. And you can see the demo ship going to come out. We'll secure another kill. Remember, even though you lose the demo ship at 160 resources, you're taking out a war junk, which is sitting at 350. So getting more than a two-on-one invest or return on investment there. That's pretty decent. I'd take that over the course of a year for sure. He's getting it in a couple of seconds. Horseman coming out though. Simtom looking to put on some pressure. We do see the outpost going to come up. Looks like it might be denied. Takes a long time for these outposts to come up. Sitting at about 66% at the moment. Nothing up here to defend at the moment. And he does find it. He does look to block. He was going for a picket fence. And quite honestly, he probably should have gone for the picket fence first. Picket fence the entire wall. Lock your vills in. And then if your enemy applies any pressure to a wall segment, just make sure you're repairing it. But then I guess the reality is that Salami could just pull vills. If he sees a picket fence line, he just comes in, pulls vills. 10 vills, let's go. 10 vills, let's go. And just keeps going through. So I can't help but... When you're walling like this, it's 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 always very difficult to do. You got kind of got to do it in secret. Salami does maintain a slight water presence, though. And the, okay, the, the, all right, this is a wall. This is a wall right here. You shall not trade, indeed. You shall not trade, but just keep in mind, it's always got access to this trade post as well. But the silver trees over here, and remember, the silver trees, the key, the silver tree trains faster and also trains cheaper. So you want to make sure that silver tree is pumping out traders as much as possible. Now, I mean, in in he, he could just march the silver tree over here, but it is being camped up at the moment. That would kind of give insight as to what his strategy is. Not going to be able to do too much at the moment, but we do see action in the middle of the map. I'd love to see a bit more differentiation between the the ships of the Rus because I really can't tell the difference. They they've all got oars. One of them's on fire. That's the only difference I know. Like the, 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 the Dow, the explosive demo rather. Beautiful micro. Look at this from Salami, just wasted shots. Demo comes in, big shots. And now Salami looking to take control on the water. Too many resources spent focusing on the land, but doing the right thing, right? Like you, you need to deny this trade. And he does a really good job. The walls here are key in denying this trade. And now we've got new walls coming up. And look at this, exactly as we suspected. Symptom says, hmm. I don't know about that. I mean, you want to trade? I'm not going to allow it. And behind this adds a second town center. Very interesting play from Simtom. So I, I, I'm, I'm enjoying this map more and more because one of the things I posited when this map came out, the reason why I liked it was because if you lost water, the game wasn't over. And a lot of people were like, Drongo, you're stupid. Once you lose water, the game's over. And I maintained that players should be looking for a transition away from water so that if they do lose water, the game isn't over. Because at the end of the day, the trade on this map for water is not that hot, right? Like if you've got a, a, a full distance water trade, like, okay, sure, it's nice, but it's not crazy. It's not like your entire map, you know, cross the entire map crazy kind of trade. It's 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 like a eh, kind of trade. You'll do it, but it's not it's nothing to write home about. Whereas... The land trade on this map is amazing. I, I would happily take a full Mongol trade route over a water trade route, which leaves you only really the deep water fish. Now for the Rus, that's fine because they can just take advantage of all the fish out here. They don't ever have to come back home. But other civilizations aren't as lucky as the Rus. And so naturally, they should want to move away from that because the further you get out into the middle, the less effective your fish become or your fishing boat become rather. So I love the fact that, that we've got both players looking to get away from this. Because people are realizing that there are wind conditions outside of water. The second town center is indicative of something great for the Rus. I do like this a lot. And I'm almost tempted to suggest that... I mean, you look back here, he's only got two lodger attack ships, five fishing goats. He's only training a single galley. But he is making more docks. I guess that's the thing. Actually, that's, that's Salami, isn't it? Here we go. Okay, never mind. He's making four attack ships. I'm like, yeah, he's, he's giving up water. It's like, bro, he's making four attack ships. You are blind. Thank you. Thank you. I know. I'm aware. I'm legally blind. Uh, I'm not actually legally blind. It's it's a meme. That's a, It's an old school meme, sir, but it does check out. Nice little push in, though, from Salami. You can see the attack ships are trying to transform at the moment. They do. Attack ship comes through. It's going to be a slow repair for him. 
loses a lot of the health and immediately another attack ship comes out. You would have loved for that to be a demo and get a double hit right here. He, he still might be able to get this one out. We can see emplacement's going to be coming through. Village is going to be taken out on that shoreline. Meanwhile, behind this, what is going on? Looks like over on the eastern side, shh, the trade has been shut down completely. Uvu's mid moved up to the front. Can you Uvu a dock? Surely you can Uvu a dock, right? I feel like you'd have to be able to. Wall comes up over on that west side as well. Now, he can actually trade to the coastal trade post. That is something to remember. So he can look to do that. Uh, and so what you, what you can do, can, can, can being the emphasis here. Look at this du double wall coming through right now. So what you can do is begin trade. So maybe trade from this market here to the coastal trade post. And it's going to be mediocre trade. It's nothing, nothing special. But what you then can do is look to secure up a position over here, begin to force back your enemy, and then move all your traders over to this trading post instead. And that, that starts to feel very, very good because you're you're building up, you know, 10, 12 traders and it's nothing crazy. And then it, it, it might have the equivalent of, say, eight or nine villages. And then all of a sudden, you go big, super big. And look at the demos coming in from Salami. Hello. Oh, he left that dock. He could have picked up three bills and the dock, but lets it live for a little bit longer. Step right out, going to be coming in on that Mongol side. Interestingly, going for the step right out. Not going to see the Kurul Tai today, but obviously that makes sense, right? The Kurul Tai would come out if he was getting gold from his trade. He's not. This this landmark at the moment just just sits here as a threat. And we can see, obviously, this is a very real threat. You can't leave that Mongol trade alone. You have to, you have to respect it. You can see just how much Simtom respects it. I really can't tell whether these are fishing boats. I mean, I know that they're not fishing boats, but you know what I mean, right? Like, just, these, these are galleys. Demo ships coming out to the front. Double demo going down on the backside. And Salami with some decent numbers at the same time. A little attack on the south side. Spearman going to be there to clean it up. The placement's able to defend the line. Simtom yet to add in a third town center at this point. But he's actively working towards it. Also going to be actively working towards a castle age here. So it could be looking for... Uh, does he have anywhere decent? I mean, he could probably look for one here. The high trade house. He is going to be going for the high trade house. Not the best high trade house, though. You'd be lucky if that gets you 80 gold. Looks like it's been fully cleaned up on this backside. How many traders are we talking at the moment? None. Not a single trader out for Salami. That's a feels bad moment right there. But just remember, the silver tree. It's one of those landmarks that just... It, it is the gift that keeps on giving throughout the game. There is always a threat of trade. You know, Salami comes out over here, takes out the wooden fortress, takes out this wall... And now Simtom's got a big question mark. He's like, is Salami trading? Is he trading? Because if he's trading, I have to go stop it. We have to fight over the trade because I can't let this guy trade. And, that, and that's just it. I mean, the, I, I think that the, the key value here of trade is there's the third town center. Uh, the, the, how many town centers does Simtom go? Because he's sitting on 429 stone. So there's a possibility he might even be looking for a fourth one. And I do like this play. As, as I said, I feel like you, you need to be moving off water. Uh, but the key difference, though, with trade and the real value of it is that it is more effective than a villager. And I think that's what makes it so attractive. Because once you hit that late game situation where your enemy's on 130 vils, you can maintain like 100, 110 vils and have the same economy as them, but you've got an extra 20 pop for military. And that makes all the difference, right? Like, imagine your army against their army. You've got, you know, maybe spears and crossbows. They've got like maybe knights and archers. And you've also got six mangonels. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and, and that's when you think about it like that, that's a lot of population that you've got spare that your enemy doesn't. So I'm a big fan of it. I like it a lot. But we do start to see the upgrades coming through for Salami now. Ahmed Hull coming in. Also picking up the extra hammocks. Just going to give him a little bit more damage. And we see more upgrades coming through. Picking up a late wheelbarrow. Yam Network and the veterancy for the Spearman. Looking like he's going to be causing a couple of fishing boats to run for their lives. At least one of them should get out. He might be able to move it into something like a demo. Actually, even a demo won't kill these fishing boats. And it's been an interesting game so far because no one's really lost the water. I mean, Salami kind of contested the docks in the mid game. But very quickly, we saw how, how Simtom was able to defend. He just looked to move into emplacements. And early on, Salami did a great job of defending against that that counterattack that... Uh, well, not really a counterattack, rather, but uh, the attack that Simtom put out. 
question is always going to be about trade, though. Still, we don't see any trade coming through for Salami. And at this point, I start to get a little bit worried for Salami, right? Because the economic count is beginning to move in favor of Simpton. He's up to three town centers. He's still got a fishing economy. At least he, he had a fishing economy. I don't know where it is at the moment. Two fishing boats. Eh. See, water really only represents a strategic interest at the moment. Not so much a, uh, a resourceful interest. Because... It's all about, once you control the water, then you control the land immediately around the water, which means you control the walls on the water, which means that you control the drops on the water. But we do see piracy coming through now. For Salami. Meaning he's going to be picking up plenty of resources with every single boat he takes down. There you go, 25 wood, 25 gold. Returning into his favor. It's a, it's a small amount when you're at this game, when you're at, you know, 92 villages, 72 villages. It's not a big deal. But nice micro coming out from Salami. We do see the demo ships making their way across the map. Nice micro, good split from Salami. Does get the connection, and it looks like the War Junk able to survive despite the connection, largely just because of that armored hull. A little bit of extra health. And now see the next War Junk might be under attack. But once again, survives with eight health because of armored hull. Really strong upgrade. Changes your, your break points. For these, uh, for these explosive dows or explosive junks. 68 gold a minute coming through on the high trade house. So, yeah, I, I, I feel like this might have been a really good spot, but maybe you couldn't fit it in there. The other alternative, other alternative? I don't know if other alternative is correct. The alternative is, like, somewhere down here. This could have been good. But it's always hard, it's always hard to know. I, I wish it would give you, like, a, a reader. And, you know, we talked earlier about... Having strategic control. This is strategic control right here. Look at this drop coming in. The D-Day the drop from Salami coming in. Spearman, men at arms. Rampaging through the base and find the first town center. The first expansion town center of Symptom. He's also got a relic over here. I'd be pulling this relic over. I'd, I'd be giving it to him. Let's I'm not giving it to him. You guys know what I mean though, don't you? Bring that bad boy over. Chuck down a little bit of a wall along. We do see the units beginning to make their way around. Horse archers in particular are going to be the concerning ones. And Warrior Monk going to be throwing its life away. Be careful, Warrior Monk. You're an expensive guy. We don't have any discount on you at the moment. No, no, uh, no High Trinity? High Trinity? High Trade House and... Oh my lord, dude. It, you know, it, it's got to be the long COVID. I, I, it, it can't be anything else. I, I just forget so many things these days. Just just simple stuff, right? Like stuff I know. Like I don't, I don't even remember, like, remember my name half the time. But anyway. Anyway. Simpton, he's in a little bit of trouble. He's going to need a, a solid defense here. Horse archers will will do him a solid, but he's going to need good micro, and it's going to cost him a lot of APM to do it. His mic, his uh, his uh, macro may get may take a toll for it. Do see now, knights on the front line. White stupor coming in behind it. Salami aging up to imperial, and ideally in this position, what he wants to be focusing down to the spearmen, so at the very least he can get his knights in there and fighting. Obviously, he's already thrown them away. Horse archers are uh, in a pretty decent spot, though. No upgrades coming through on them just yet. At the same time, in the middle of the ocean, it looks like we've got a couple more fights happening. And somehow, it looks like Simtom is holding on. He's holding on for dear life right now. Look at the villager count, though. He's lost a lot of vills. Salami having killed 41 workers this game. A huge amount going down. Crossbow's also going to be joining the fray here. So Simtom should be fine on this defensive. He does a decent job, but Salami kills huge amounts of villagers here. Causing a lot of panic in the base of Symptom. Look at the charge coming out from those Mongol units. Oh man, those are scary. You just gotta run for your life, really, don't you? Run back to the production. Okay, I was gonna say, yeah, you gotta make sure that you split these horse archers away from the crossbows. You don't want them to be running together. And the Imperial Age comes through for Salami. Now, is he trading yet? Where is Salami's trade? And why is he not trading? Is it just all separate out gold? I mean, where is he getting these resources from? Is it just... Is it just food on the fishing boats? He's got 14 fishing boats and probably just... Step it out, gold. Okay. Fair enough. I mean, the trade has been shut down completely, right? Like, there's just no way it's coming through. So, I guess I can give up on that dream. But Simtom holds. And it's a good hold. The main issue was he lost a lot of villagers. He lost a huge amount of villagers. We know he lost at least 10 in this town center. Uh, we also saw him lose plenty of villagers over here as he was doing a bit of a run by. But he does have the town centers to back him up, though. At least a second town center. Only only two TCs for the moment. Against the Imperial Age of, uh, of Salami, though, it's going to be questionable how much value actually pulls from it. 
obviously it's decent, but it's not really going to be un enough to draw a difference between these two guys. Veterancy coming through now for Simtom, looking to pick up those archer upgrades. We also see Boya's Fortitude, Horticulture and Fertilization coming through as well. And the first of the Sacred Sites begins getting captured. When it comes to Relic numbers, he's up to two. One, two, two Relics out here. And what was that sound? Enemy capturing Sacred Site? It was like... Bum, bum. He, he got Sheba bow limbs? I, I have no idea what that sound was, though. Ooh, I, I, I'm genuinely clueless what that sound was. It, it kind of sounded like an age up, but it wasn't. <gasps> oh, Lord. Is that is that what the sound was? Bow chats are coming out? Oh, Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the absolute beast from the East. The Baoshua. It's been a long time since we've seen this guy. But it is an anti-structure specialist. Very good at taking out buildings. And of course, at the moment... Oh, oh Lord. Oh, I don't, I don't, mm. Let's see how that goes. One, two, and about chat's dead. <laughs> it, was, it was a quick life, but it was a good life. South side attack, though. We've got horse archers breaking through. We've also got... Look at this. we got knights coming in, but we've got incendiary arrows on the Mangadai. Looking to try and kite away these positions. Horse archers versus Mangadai. Horse archers should technically win. Whether they actually win is going to be a different matter. And look at this. He's broken through the wall. I don't know if he'd always broken through the wall. You know what? I think he, th this wall had always been like that. Never mind me. I'm just... I'm a little bit special sometimes. So Sacred Victory is approaching. God, my mouse wheel's annoying me. You know, the other day... I, I mean, it's the ongoing saga, right? Drongo and the mouse wheel. Um, the other day, I just like banged it really hard. I just smashed it as hard as I could on my desk. And it fixed it. And I'm like, oh. Oh, it works. Um, but... Now it's back. Now it's back. So, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm going to have to give it a little bit of a smash on the desk again. We're going to be going down here over on the east side. You can see him picking up a couple of improved techs. Salami with plenty of stone in the bank. 955. Could be thinking about going for some emplacements with that. Obviously not going to be able to drop down any keeps. The Manganite numbers looking really solid. What kind of upgrades have we got on this? Let's have a look and see. I just realized we can check on the UI. So he's got plus two at the moment. Balanced projectiles has come through. Other than that, no plus three just yet. And I did he get elite? Yeah, he's got elite now. So elite Mangadai. Remember, these guys get affected by biology as well. So you can see that little bit of extra health. So Salami doing very well so far on the defensive. The Mangadai have been solid. Now, where are the Bauchwans? There they are. Aren't they beautiful ships? You can tell those apart, that's for sure. These guys tower above the rest of it. Look at the Bauchwan moving in to be a bit defensive here. Clearing out the sacred site. Looking to focus down some of the knights as they move, or lances rather. No, no knights. I had it right the first time. Don't worry. Don't worry. And look at this cleanup. And this, this, is a, this is a real problem, right? Once you get to the late game. Now, Simtom should be doing one thing when he sees this, okay? Walling. You need to wall, Simtom. You need to wall right now. You needed to wall yesterday. You need to wall immediately. You cannot be allowing this. But the problem that you're going to have... A Mangadai drops. How do you deal with Mangadai drops? Even 16 Mangadai in your base is enough Mangadai for you to never... Never live again. Now we do see additional town centers coming up. The third town center is coming up here. This is going to get completely cleaned up. Mangadai way too quick. 1.62 movement speed. Same movement speed. Actually, I think the knight might be 1.64. No, it is 1.62. But the high armory going to be coming in. Let's see if we can spot it. Check over on this west side. Nope. Not going to be here. There it is. In the north. So we do see one, two, three town centers coming through so far. So Simtom, definitely on the way back when it comes to the economy. Just needs... Please, please wall Simtom. Simtom, you, you cannot allow your economy to be pillaged the way that the Mongols wish to do so. Ah, uh, yeah. He's, I think he's going for drop, so isn't he? I am pretty sure he's going for drops here. I... He's... he's oh, yeah. Mm. Maybe, maybe Simtom realizes. I mean, at this, at this point, do you just go, okay, it's over? Like, how, how do you deal... How do you deal with an enemy that's got 100% unfettered access to your base? And it's only going to get worse because the Bauchwans are clearing out the rest of your defense on water. Look how much damage they're able to do as well. Simtom now reaching the Imperial Age. High armory coming through. How do you respond? How do you... This is, this is it, right? I think you just have to try and wall the entire... 
you, like you have to put your economy on the edge of the map see m this is the thing right like p p this matchup will evolve to that point where you will see people making all of their building or all of their uh farms on the edge of the map right and like they will just be walling everything because once this happens 13 worker kills watch it oh sorry uh f what was it 40 43 worker kills just watch how quickly it goes like i'm, I'm not going to give you the the uh the, the dracula treatment uh but uh yeah, there's no real need for us to count it, but you can see just how quickly these villas are going down. I, I, I feel like at this point, the game is just almost 100% over. He, he's just killed 20 villas in the blink of an eye. And the problem that you've got is how do you deal with this? You can't deal with this. The elite Mangadai is probably... I'm going to go out and say it. The most overpowered unit in Imperial is the elite Mangadai because the damage it's got is so high that it, it, it doesn't mess around. Like, at least in the, in the Feudal Age, it, you, there's... The, your defense mechanism is that you can kind of run away. But here, you don't stand a chance. 18 damage is just way too much. These vills do have their textiles, but it's not going to make, make a difference. And up to 70 vill kills now. Rampaging through the base. The economy. I mean, he, he's got to just start making more town centers. And he does make more town centers. Fourth town center coming up now for him. So definitely the right play there. But the issue is that he's going to be bleeding more vills. He, he can make four vills. Well, rather, he can make 12 vills a minute. But at the moment, he, he's losing vills at a rate of about 40 a minute. So you don't have to be a mathematician to work out that that ain't good. Still losing more. Just giving an absolute run around. This, this single unit... I mean, how do you deal with this? That's... And good game gets called. He surrenders. He writes it in the chat. He says, good game. I can't deal with the Mangadais. The Baoshuan, the Mangadai combo. It's beautiful. Absolutely well played there by Salami. Good game. Fellas, go check him out. I'll leave a link in the description. He's, he's ever amazing as always. And we'll catch you guys in the next one.